reason of using it widely because it's actually easy. Uh, the things are getting easier here that's why uh, you, you will see most of the stuff not interesting or kind of stuff so if you observe that uh, please focus uh, don't worry okay so let's focus on hibernate what exactly hibernate is okay so remember our sessions on JDBC what's the reason of connecting with uh, database is to interact with the database so there is a Java layer there is a JDBC API if you remember and then you connect to DB right in between you have small small configurations here and there you know that what exactly I'm talking about driver manager and you have driver and that driver is responsible for converting that everything to DB and all okay so now here what happens is in GDBC API let's say if you are saving something in uh, actor table here if you remember that table actor table as actor name and all okay so that's a table and you want that detail in actor.java right so now as you have first name there you have first name here you okay? that is also called as bean so here you have first name a last name kind of stuff and then those will be mapped here F I R S T first underscore name okay as a table column last underscore name okay and whatever may be address okay zip code okay so this is an actor table this is actually actor.java and in between these things happens you have JDBC API you create a connection you ask driver manager to give the connection driver actually uh, do the connection connecting format your formalities and all and then gives the connection back and then you say select star from actor this query okay then you get uh, first name last name address and zip code from actor table then you have result set you iterate through it and then you say get in sorry get string first name and then you set that into actor dot set first name and then you do actually this statement I'll just write it here so you say actor dot set string sorry set first name okay and inside here you say rs dot get string okay and then you pass first name here first underscore name of course in the string and that you repeat for everything so you iterate through it you create actors you provide so all kind of stuff you do what hibernate does for us is hibernate actually give us this particular actor t or actor dot java instance from actor table directly okay you do not have to do all this pranayam i'll say okay so you do not have to do all these things okay this is so simple that all the steps which you just did are gone and then what you ask is give me actor done and he will give you first name last name address zip code already mapped to these things okay you don't even have this set string methods and all those you don't have to do anything you just directly get actor so that's what the hibernated that's why I told you it's a super simple stuff okay and hibernate has its own logic of creating connections its own logic of mapping these things so that's what we're gonna learn okay so the primary thing of hibernate is now what we are actually doing is you are Java layer then you have hibernate layer okay and then you have DB layer and what hibernate layer does is actually okay we also called it as a persistence layer so in hibernate layer the word persistence is used a lot so we will say persistence layer okay so persistent is uh, it's not a company of course it is a company persistence but persisting an object means saving an object okay storing an object for a long time a really long time that's why persist so the persistence layer and then you have db layer 
and Hibernate takes care of all this uh, mapping of Java to DB and DB to Java. Okay, and it handles with the help of configuration files and it's one time. Okay, Hibernate came up with its own way of representing data with the help of HQL. Okay, that is Hibernate query language. So you can also use SQL, but you can also use HQL, Hibernate query language with stock with objects. So we will talk about this later. We will also talk about a detailed deep dive into what exactly this is part one session. This is first slide. We have three of them. Uh, three long slides so probably it takes uh, entire weekend we have weekend classes so entire weekend or Monday or Tuesday something like that but it's gonna be a fun when you actually deep dive and see how easy it is okay so let's understand what are the components really hibernate needs to provide us those facilities Any questions before starting? Pros and cons of JDBC. So pros of JDBC is a clean and simple SQL processing. Okay, with good performance with large data, very good for small application and simple syntax. Okay, cons of JDBC complex if it is using large projects, large programming overhead, no encapsulation, hard to implement MVC concept. Okay, query is DBMS specific. Okay. Why object relational mapping that is ORM okay ORM is a concept it's not hibernate hibernate is not ORM okay hibernate is a ORM but I'm not saying uh, it's not like uh, hibernate is only ORM there are a lot of other frameworks also which are uh, ORM frameworks I do not have any example in top of my mind but if I have any I will definitely share with you okay but the most popular ORM framework is hibernate Okay. When we work with object oriented system, there is a mismatch between object model and the relational database. Okay. RDBMS represents the data in a tabular format, whereas object oriented languages such as Java represents it is in an interconnected graph of objects. Okay. Hard to implement MVC concept. Okay. So uh, what the question is why uh, JDBC is hard to implement MVC concept. MVC concept is model view control. So what actually MVC concept says is you should actually have a data layer separation or layer separation in a matter of fact. Now when we are doing layer separations we have we should be keeping our queries one side you should be keeping your business logic one side you should be keeping your model objects okay which are oh, sorry view objects and uh, model objects means which are carrying the data beans one side. What happens is when you are writing queries sometimes we evaluate or we do uh, some business logic in queries itself like aggregating like taking a max of value like sum of something okay so what happens we use JDBC features we use SQL features okay with the help of SQL we aggregate the data with the help of SQL we make a count of the data those things are actually a business logic we are not supposed to do that with the help of SQL okay but we end up doing that and we actually merge two different layers that is actually the business layer to database layer okay so that's something called as um, layer uh, fusion okay so we are not supposed to do that okay one layer is bleeding into my previous architect used to use this word one layer is bleeding into another layer that's not supposed to happen so it is more frequent more common in JDBC than Hibernate okay I'm not saying it's not possible in Hibernate but it's not common in Hibernate okay so it's hard to implement okay we are not saying impossible to implement we are saying hard to implement MVC component uh, com concept here okay when we work with object oriented system what happens is there is a mismatch objects are represented in a tabular format okay so objects are represented in a table format and we have <coughs> our object as a sorry uh, table is represented in a tabular format and objects are represented in a graph <coughs> excuse me so this is where the mismatch happened and that's mismatch we gonna solve here okay JDBC is used on it in the client server what does that mean I did not get the question properly probably Okay, so see here the graph and this conceptual uh, representation. 
in JDBC used only in client server environment. Okay, it's not like that. JDBC is used everywhere. Okay. To be very frank, all the small projects till now are in JDBC. Okay. Even now I could do JDBC for small small project. If the my if my project is like having six queries, seven queries or even ten queries, I prefer to use JDBC. If the project is very complex, the tables are huge. Okay. If there are 132 columns, okay, there are tables like that. I do have one table which has 132 columns. Okay. So if the tables has huge columns, lot of things to do, then I don't prefer JDBC. I prefer Hibernate over that. Okay. Why? Because uh, you will see. Okay. But if the queries are simple, if the queries are narrow, okay, the tables are narrow, then I definitely prefer JDBC. Super simple. It's a performance intrinsic. It's really nice. Okay, so it's not like JDBC is out of the question or something like that with the help of Hibernate. No, nothing gonna happen like that. JDBC is awesome, still rocking. Okay, so see here there is an employee object. You can have ID, first name, last name, and salary. Okay, so employee has his employee ID. Okay, its first name, its last name, and its salary. That's what we have. And you have getters and setter method for that. So you have get ID, get first name, get last name, and all kind of stuff. So this is actually a normal Java representation. This is called as bean. Okay, why it is called as bean? Bean has two rules. First rule of a bean, okay, bean or a pojo. First rule of the pojo or bean is it should have a private member variables and getters and setters for that. Okay, so it has a private member variables. It has a getters and setters for that. Okay, and second rule is it should have an empty no argument constructor. It does have a no argument constructor. Okay, so these are the two rules of having pojo. So that is a POJO, that is plain, what is POJO? Plain old Java object, okay, it's just a short form, Cathay Sierra invented POJO, that is plain old Java object, okay, it's called a Java Bean also, this concept is copied from EJB, okay, Enterprise Java Bean, so it's old technology, ancient technology, but the name remains, okay, so Java Bean which encapsulates the data. Okay, so the rules of beans are, there are two rules, having a constructor and having getters and setters. Okay, so let's write that down. Constructor and getters setters. Okay, so we have this constructor and if you go down, now in RDVMS, this particular table will be represented as this. So you have a table, which has employee ID column, first name column, last name column, salary column. Okay, and then you represent the data. So this is what the difference is. So you represent the data like this in Java and you represent data like this in a tabular format in RDVMS. Okay, so you have to map these things. You have to map this thing somehow. So that's what we do. Questions? What about the volume of the data with, uh, okay, good question, very good question. What about the volume of the data, Hibernate versus JDBC? Okay, regardless whether you are working with JDBC or Hibernate, volume of the data is handled in completely different manner. Okay, so there are two ways to handle volume of the data. First thing is your pagination mechanism. Pagination meaning you uh, read page by page. Okay, so let's say if you are reading 10,000 uh, data at a time then you can read page by page. If you are not able to, if you are working on a batch framework, you need entire data on the memory, then you have to work with the Hibernate or in JDBC in the exact same manner. The benefit of JDBC in such scenario is, I can choose which object I need in the memory and which to ignore. Okay? And you will see what exactly I am talking about later. And Hibernate is, there is a problem in Hibernate is it will load entire data into the memory okay without even asking me okay so I have a benefit of choosing the data while loading into the memory and I don't have a choice on hibernate okay uh, I can add certain conditions there here and there okay we can do that definitely but memory intrinsic if you compare the graph of memory with the help of Jensor or other tools then you will see JDBC has a lower memory graph than hibernate so performance wise also in the, in the first comparison itself we told what is the comparison of JDBC and Hibernate it says good performance with a large data 
Okay, that's the second sentence I'm writing. So if the data is large, data is huge, then it's very good performing as compared to the Hibernate because Hibernate is going to load all the objects on the memory. Okay, there is a way to stop that. It is called as lazy loading. We're going to see that later. Okay, ORM stands for Object Relational Mapping. What does that mean? Your object is mapped to the relational tables. Okay, and that's what we're going to do. Now, how do how we going to do that? We'll see. So what are the advantages of ORM? Let's business code access the objects other than DB. Okay, forget about this as of now. We'll just we first map it. <clears throat> so this is your employee. No, I need employee dot shower. Sorry about that. Yeah. So this is our example. We have ID, first name, last name, salary. Forget about these guys. Ignore this. You have uh, empty constructor, your getters and setters. Okay, you have getters and setters and you are done. So you have a POJO, complete POJO. And now what you're going to do is you want to map this to the table. Okay, so you have another table called employee table and you will map it. So how do we really do that? We do that with the help of mapping file. And that mapping file looks like this. So what I do here, don't worry about this thing, you're going to learn a lot about this. But we are just saying that this class com.h2k.test employee is mapped to the table employee. So you are mapping your Java file to the employee file, uh, employee table. Okay. And how do you map it? Now you are telling one by one that my first name in Java is my first name column. My last name in Java is my last name column in SQL. My salary in Java is mapped to salary in employee table. This is how you map column to a property in Java file. And that, this is how you actually load the data into Java classes. So this is a mapping file. We're going to learn about this. Okay. As of now, I'm just showing you how this data is represented so that you will get to know what are the advantages. Okay, now your Java overhead is completely gone. You don't have to do that result set and while and all kind of stuff. Okay, everything is handled in the XML format. So what's the advantages of ORM? Let's business code access objects than TV tables. Hide the details of SQL queries from object oriented logic. We don't want SQL queries now. Based on JDBC under the hood. Under the hood everything is